New polling suggests that amongst the eight named candidates in the conservative leadership race, Peter McKay is the front runner. But where do the other seven stack up? Well, our next guest is among that group, Ontario lawyer, longtime conservative activist, Jim Karahalios. He's gotten the first green light needed to advance in the race. He made his name on the Axe the Tax movement, a campaign to get rid of the carbon tax. Is it enough though? Will he find some momentum to get him to the second checkpoint? Well, let's find out. He joins us now. Uh, Mr. Karahalios, great to have you on the program. Uh, what do you make of the, the poll that puts Peter McKay in front of the pack, Aaron O'Toole second, and the rest of you barely registering? What, what do you take from that? Spending my birthday with you, Evan, so it's good to be here. Look, these polls are really insignificant at this stage. It seemed like a junk poll to me of an online poll of, uh, of across Canada, people that are not members of the party necessarily asking to check a name off a list. And of course, you know, an establishment politician like Peter McKay, uh, establishment red Tory like Aaron O'Toole, who've been in cabinet, they're going to have name recognition. And it's not an accurate poll. The, the people that are going to decide the next leader of the Conservative Party are card carrying members of the Conservative Party of Canada. And what we've seen is that the red Tory establishment candidates don't do really well in those types of leadership races. And that's probably why you're seeing a buy in of $300,000 at the end of the month to limit the field of possible candidates that can get in this race uh, to favor the establishment of red Tory candidates because they got to limit the field and oh, they don't you want- think, Sorry, you, you think that was, that was a barrier? You think that bar, that barrier, that $300,000 threshold was literally uh, set up to prevent guys like you from running? We're looking at an establishment red Tory coronation for edgy Aaron O'Toole or Peter McKay. That's the way this is lining up. And so I always thought democracy was whoever got the most votes wins. But apparently in this election, you need to come with $300,000. So while Aaron O'Toole and Peter McKay's teams, you know, in one hand, they had the knife that they were plunging into Andrew Shear's back. And in the other hand, they were going up and down Bay Street collecting checks, getting ready for a leadership race. If you want to run as a grassroots conservative and, and build a movement across the country, $300,000 in four weeks is not as easy going up and down Bay Street for a couple trips, uh, getting uh, checks of $1,600 okay. from some friends. So... So obviously it's a barrier to entry that we've never seen in Canadian politics before. By the way, you're, I want to introduce people to you. Yeah. Not only are you a lawyer, but your Axe the Carbon Tax campaign, which became very well known among conservative circles in Ontario, you end up suing that party. You had a battle against, of course, um, Patrick Brown, when he was the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party. Uh, you and I used to talk a lot about that, but it really got under your skin, this red Tory issue. Do you consider uh, Peter McKay a red Tory, the very kind of red Tory that you have fought against? Uh, Aaron O'Toole and Peter McKay are red Tories. Let's go back on my story. I've not only been fighting the ax the carbon tax, or to ax the carbon tax, but also I've been fighting corruption in, inside politics in Ontario for the last few years. I did not sue the Ontario PC party. They originally sued me as a way to shut down my Ax the Carbon Tax campaign and another campaign fighting against vote rigging inside the Ontario PC party. Now I see the same individuals that were running the Ontario PC party in that top-down manner, getting behind Aaron O'Toole and Peter McKay, and they want me to believe that they are blue Tories and against the carbon tax when they were happy to promote Patrick Brown, who was pushing a carbon tax on conservatives against their will, I'm not buying it and no one else is buying it. So I'm in this race well, because we need to ax more, the carbon okay, tax but, and we need to get out of the Paris Accord. Go ahead, Evan. Okay, but you're, but, but okay, and I get that. They, they don't want to all ax the carbon tax, so maybe they've all found, but there's, there's gotta be more to, to you than just ax the carbon tax real quick, because I got about a minute here. Uh, on, on these social conservative issues, same-sex marriage, abortion, medical aid and dying, where do you stand on that? Well, look, uh, I'm pro-life and I can say this, any leader of a political party that wants to shut down conscience rights of MPs is an enemy of democracy. Our conservative party believes free votes for MPs on matters of conscience, and I will defend that. And I don't trust edgy Aaron O'Toole or Peter McKay to withhold that because when their, when their friend Patrick Brown was in charge, he didn't have any of that in the Ontario PC party. But okay, so real quick, I've asked this to other candidates. Just on in, uh, your pro-life, would you, I don't know, roll back abortion access rights, anything on that? I think that what is incumbent is when legislation is presented in the House of Commons, I want every MP to read that legislation and vote 
in the manner that they think is the correct way. Our conservative party- But would you encourage our, it? But would you, if you were the leader, I just, would you I just it? told you that I want free votes on matters of conscience. That's our conservative party's position. And so on matters of conscience, we're not whipping the vote one way or another. And there's no law on that matter in Canada. And we have to uphold that uh, for a good, healthy party that we have. Uh, just real quick, two last questions. Same-sex marriage, where, where are you on that one? We have no position in the Conservative Party on marriage. In 2005, Stephen Harper had a, a proposal from our Conservative Party. I'm not apologizing for his position from 2005. If you want to ask uh, those that were in charge at the time, Jenny Byrne, Corey you, Tonight, to take believe? a position. You, you're, a, you're, a, you're a straight talker. I, believe, you I believe that the law of the land right now is the way it is. And I'm not coming on your show, Evan, to apologize for the Conservative Party position on t in 2005, when Stephen Harper had a, had a position on that matter, the law has been settled, the courts have ruled on that, and that's the current law that we have. Okay, but you, you're not giving me your personal view on it, but I guess- we, Our conservative party down. does not have a position on marriage. That's the fact, that's the truth of the matter. No, 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 actually the conservative party and the constitution, they, they ended up voting to support marriage. No, 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 uh, no, no, that's what, that's what Aaron O'Toole was telling you. We had a vote. No, at a, they re, they removed they yes. removed the, the definition of marriage between a man and a woman. That's, that's right. How, that's what happened. That's right, and which means we don't have a position on marriage in the Conservative Party policy declaration. I look forward to Aaron O'Toole or Lisa Raitt bringing that forward at the next policy convention. But right now, we don't have a position on marriage in the Conservative Party of Canada. You know you're going to be asked this again and again, Jim. You're going to well, be asked, do you support... I, can I come back, Evan? Personally? Are you going to let me... Gonna, then you know you're going to be asked if you're going to march in a gay pride parade. I don't know why this has become a litmus test. I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, I don't you? know why. I don't know why in every interview uh, these issues are driving the agenda. But it's the way that we've uh, we've we've come to terms know, on this do leadership. Do you have an answer? Okay, so so I will talk economy, but do you have an answer? Would you march in the same... In no, a, I've in already said... Parade? I've already told the Global Mail I'm not marching in any parade because I believe it's a red Tory okay. litmus test and uh, I'm not marching in any parade. Uh, la last thing, how would you get a pipeline built? You know, there's court challenges. Everyone says the Liberals can't get it done. If you were in charge, how'd you get it done? My environmental plan is gonna be to drill, drill, build pipelines right across this country and adapt. That's my environmental plan and we need pipelines. And it's no wonder we're seeing our economy in the state that it's in uh, when, when we're not backing up our natural resource industry and the West is Jim, very upset about it. Jim, Jim uh, that's not the, that's your natural resources plan. You're saying drill, drill is your environmental plan? Yes, it is. Every barrel of oil that stays in the ground in Canada means another, an extra barrel of oil that comes from countries overseas with worse environmental records and poorer okay. standards than our own. We need to boost up okay, our natural but, uh, resource I, I, That's natural resource. Okay, that's natural resource. So you would do nothing on the climate change file? Of course, we're gonna adapt. And industry is leading the way on this. I'm an environmental engineer, if you knew, not an environmental engineer, a professional engineer, but I studied environmental engineering as an undergrad. I know the file very well. And a carbon tax and the Paris Accord is not solving anything. It's glossing over an issue and we're not meeting the targets. And I think Justin Trudeau has to right. start being honest with Canadians and has to admit that we're not meeting the targets with this Paris Accord. It's actually giving up our sovereignty and it's actually taxing us too much and causing right. jobs to leave the country. You saw the, you saw the tech project uh, collapse and fall apart last minute. It's devastating, and no matter no, no wonder the West is uh, uptight right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to more conversation. Yeah, with I'll you, be back, Evan. Uh, Jim, oh, oh, always a pleasure. Great to have you on the program, sir. Thanks, Evan.